Hello, this is Dr. Chopsy, and welcome back to another video. This one is going to show you how you can decode DNA sequences, converting sequences made up of these four molecules here into sequences of proteins, which are the workforce that keep our cells alive. But before that, I'd really appreciate it if you could click the like and subscribe buttons to help the channel grow. Just to summarise some of the previous videos I've done on DNA and proteins, which you can find up here, DNA is made up of two long molecular chains comprising of four different nucleic acid molecules, adenine, cytosine, guanine and thymine. The order of these molecules in the chain tells the cell how to make proteins and are also used to regulate when they are produced. Regions of DNA that produce proteins are called genes and are subjected to the processes of transcription and translation in order to produce proteins. But how does the gene go from a sequence of nucleic acid molecules in a chain represented like this to a protein made up of completely different amino acid molecules that ends up looking like this? You can find out more about these processes in the video linked here, but to summarise the process, the gene of interest is copied into a temporary, single-stranded copy made out of RNA, which is then read by a ribosome. This is where the sequence is translated into an amino acid chain. In the translation process, the RNA sequence is read in groups of three bases to give the instruction for which amino acid needs to be added next. This group of three bases is called a codon. With four bases available, there are a total of 64 possible combinations that can be made up. While all of these combinations are present in nature, they only lead to 21 possible outcomes. This means that several codons can lead to the same outcome. The outcomes of all of the combinations are summarised in this table here which scientists use when they design DNA fragments for research or when they want to see what effects a genetic mutation can have on a protein of interest. While it might seem complicated to follow at first, it is simple once you get to grips with how it works. To convert from a DNA or RNA codon to an amino acid, you first select the row on the left, highlighted in red, which corresponds to the first base in the codon. The second base in the codon matches with the top part of the table, highlighted in green, with the final base matching with the right hand side of the table, highlighted in blue, which matches the row of the first base in the codon. While most codons lead to an amino acid that is added to the chain, there are special sets of codons that have different properties to the rest of the available codons. The codon ATG, which codes for the amino acid methionine, is found at the beginning of every gene that is translated, and is often referred to as the start codon. This codon is used as a signal by the ribosome to start translating and produce a new amino acid chain. Where there is a start, there must also be an end, and as such there are three codons, TAA, TAG and TGA, that tell the ribosome to stop the translation process, and as such are known as stop codons. Unlike the start codon, these codons do not code for an amino acid, and instead is a complete hard stop to the translation process. To show how this works, let's go through a few example codons. ATG, CAT, GCT, and TAG. With ATG, the first base is adenine, or A. So we go to row A on the red side of the table. The second base is thymine, or T. So for the top row of the table, we go to the column T, or U for uracil if you're dealing with an RNA sequence. For the final base, we only need to look at the blue set of bases that are contained within the adenine section of the table. If we take the G row for the base guanine, and find the point at which all three of these bases cross each other, we get to the amino acid methionine. If we follow the same system for the codon CAT, we get to the amino acid histidine. For the third example, GCT, we get to the amino acid alanine. The final codon, TAG, gives the stop instruction, which seems like a good place to end this video. Thank you for watching. As always, I would appreciate it if you hit the like button if you liked the video or found it useful, and to click the subscribe button if you haven't already. It would help the channel out a lot. You can find more of my videos by using the links here, but if not, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.